Today we'll learn about the Help for the Homeless Hygiene Drive, find out about Winchester Academy's upcoming spring series, meet the City of Wapaka's new Finance Director, get introduced to Crime Stoppers, and meet the Pet of the Month. I'm Joni Kern and this is What's Happening in Wapaka. Our first guest today is Robin Madsen with Foundations for Living. It's good to see you again, Robin. It's good to see you too, Joni. Haven't You're seen you good. since. Thank you. I haven't seen you since last winter. Mm -hmm. The day I went drove my car in yeah, the ditch. Right. Yeah, yeah. We won't. We won't talk about this that. This winter is much, much better. That's right. Um, we are going to talk today about the um, homeless help for the homeless hygiene drive. Correct. Now, tell me what that is. It is a drive, and um, it's a col uh, for like three weeks, from February 22nd to March 15th, we have collection bins in different area businesses and around the city that people can bring in their hygiene items like shampoo, toilet paper, um, um, those kind of things. Soap. I saw, Soap, yep. yeah, I saw the whole list here. Um, baby care with diapers and wipes and yep. those kinds of things. Yep. So this isn't something that Foundations of Living is doing. This is actually something that the family is? Yes, WEMI, the family, they, they sponsor this and we just get to participate in it. Is so everything that is collected here in Wapaka goes to three different agencies, Foundations for Living, Cap Services, and Ruby's Pantry. We will split up all of the product and it should last us all year long that we can give to the people who come into our office and that's great. Uh, closed closet. So last year, how much was collected? Um, oh gosh, it was with all of it. It was close to one point three million dollars. We actually got um, the golden toilet brush award <laughs> because it was our first year last year and we collected probably about fifteen thousand dollars with the product yeah the state of wisconsin was two hundred and seventy three thousand so yep. that's that's a ton of help it is um and for people who need those because and we were just talking about this before i came on the reason that they need help with the personal care items so badly is? Because food stamps doesn't cover it. So I can buy a bag of Doritos. You can. But I can't buy toilet paper. Nope. And that is something. So this really is a program that's helping people who are struggling mm -hmm. with the basic care necessities for their yeah, home. Those, those basic necessities that we often take for granted. Yeah, like shampoo and soap mm -hmm. and toothpaste and toilet paper, you were telling mm -hmm. me. You never know how good it is until... You, you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of an odd thought. Yes, it is. Um, it is. So when is this again? February 22nd to March 15th. Okay. And where can I find out where I can donate? Um, you can go on our website at www.foundationsforlivingwapaka.com and we will have it posted on there and it'll, and it'll have a whole list of all the places you can donate. Because there's quite a few. There's there's thirty there's thirty sites this year that are that are going to be collecting in Wapaka. Mm -hmm. That is so almost yep. anywhere I go shopping. Yep. Will will have something that I can donate to. Yep. That's yep. fabulous. I'll be there. That's great. Well, Robin, thank you so much for joining us. We'll thank see you, you again one of these days. Yeah, I won't wait. I won't wait so long to come back. Hey, that sounds like it. I can't believe it's been a year already. Isn't it something? I yeah, lots of stuff it is. Going on that I can share with you. Oh, that's good. Robin with <laughs> Foundations for Living. Thanks again. Thanks, Johnny. Next, we are going to be talking about the spring series with Winchester Academy. The revival in downtown Wapaka prides themselves in providing above and beyond customer service. From small to tall, women of any age can consider the revival your professional personal stylist, helping you find the right outfit for any occasion, weddings, senior pictures, or even a special night out. The revival also specializes in home decor with a large selection and variety of items to choose from, including art from local Wapaka artists. The Revival, 111 West Fulton Street, across from Farmer State Bank, downtown Wapaka. For more information, call 
615-281-5100 or find them on Facebook. The Revival Home, Art, and Fashion. Our next guest is Ann Linden from Winchester Academy. Welcome to the show, Ann. Thank you, Tony. It is always nice to talk to Winchester Academy because you guys always have programs that are going on and it's a huge variety of programs. So they've got their spring series going on and there are seven, we have seven items in there and we're just gonna talk about a few of them. The first one is an author coming and I didn't know about these baseball players who are Wisconsin natives, so tell us about that. Okay. Um well, our author speaker is named Joe Nisi, and he's coming to us from Western Wisconsin. He's a librarian and particularly a sports researcher. And he's gonna to talk to us about Burley Grimes, who was the last legal spitballer in Major League Baseball. When they changed the rule to outlaw um, spitballing, they allowed people that were already practicing that to do it, and he was the last one to, to live and, and practice that uh, technique. Or I'm, I'm not a sports fan, so I don't know what you even call that stuff. <laughs> but anyway, he's one of the subjects. And the other one is uh, Andy Pafko, who was really popular. He was a big fan favorite, um, particularly with the Chicago Cubs. And since we have such a, a large population of uh, Chicago visitors and residents here now in Wapaka, it'll be of particular interest. Oh, yes, it will be. And talking about baseball players, the old ones are, I mean, we all hear about Hank Aaron, mm -hmm. but obviously he wasn't the only baseball player there was. So it's nice to hear about some that are Wisconsin natives, because that's always something, you know, you say, did you know they were from Wisconsin? I yeah. mean, that's always, that's bragging rights for us here. That's so right. that's pretty cool. And then you have another, um, this spring you have another program with an author. So tell us about that one. Okay, well actually it's a professor and he's collected an anthology of writings about, um, that were written reflecting on or uh, during or about World War I. And we're currently in the 100th anniversary of World War I, so there's a kind of a renewed interest in that area. Yeah, and my husband actually really enjoys studying the world wars. So that's something that's of a lot of interest, especially to vets, yes. veterans. Yeah, and the speaker is uh, Scott Emmert <coughs> from UW Fox Valley. Oh, that and is so going to be fascinating. going to be great. Now, you were telling me that this is, this spring is your 600th program. Yes, ma'am. You guys have been around for a while. We are coming up on our 25th anniversary. We'll be celebrating that in 2016. That and is so amazing. And so as kind of a lead up to that, we're making a big, kind of a big deal out of our 600th program. Well, you should, absolutely should. And the other one, for those of us who um, like to be outside a little bit, your other program is about bird watching. That's right. Um, we're bringing back uh, Brett Barker from UW Marathon County. He's spoken to us three times previously on various topics related to the Civil War. Um, he's a great teacher, a great speaker, has a lot of passion for his subjects, and he's going to talk to us about one of his um, personal hobbies, which is bird watching, and uh, James Audubon. So I can actually go to this and learn what the birds are? that Because I have some of the prettiest birds. I don't have any idea what any of them are unless it's a robin or a crow or a <laughs> pigeon or something like that. So do you have anything? Now, this is a whole series. So how often do you run these programs that you have? Is it weekly or biweekly? No, we do about 20 to 24 programs a year. And um, we divide them into three series. We do a winter spring that runs somewhere late January to early May. There's a summer series, June to early August, and a fall series we start up sometime after Labor Day and try to end before we get deep into the Christmas holidays. Sometimes we go gotcha. to mid-December. And we can see all of that on the website. You can see it on our website. Um, so we can go and see the dates and the times and who's sure. doing what and then you can choose. Yeah, and then we have these brochures available. You can pick them up at the programs. They're available in the library, Chamber of Commerce, and various places around town. Great, we'll grab one of those. Thank you, Anne, for joining You're us welcome. today. I really appreciate this it. This was easy. All right, next we have um, Kathy Kaza, who is the city's new finance director.
Welcome to the Wapaka Area Public Library. At our library, we have programs for all ages, starting at birth to adult and beyond. In our children's department, your children may attend children's story time, or for your really young child, we have baby garden. The teen room is for teens from grade six through high school, and we provide lots of services and programs in that room as well. We're not just about books. We have DVDs, we have music, we have puzzles, and we have lots of space for community activities. We have meeting rooms for public use, and our Winchester Academy of Wapaka uses our meeting rooms almost every Monday night. Every month, the exhibit room hosts a fun and interactive or educational exhibit. The exhibits are free, open to the public, and geared towards all ages. They're open during regular library hours. You can enter our building and use our internet computers, or you can bring your own device and use our free Wi-Fi. Our friendly staff is available to assist you with all of your information needs at the information desk or at the main desk. There is staff in every department during our open hours. One of our newest services is ebooks and downloadable audiobooks. You can access them through InfoSoup, our online catalog. Our catalog has materials from all 50 libraries in our consortium and you can reach our catalog at infosoup.org from any internet computer. The library has plenty of great books, but so much more to offer. So stop down at your Wapaka Library today. If you'd like to be a guest on What's Happening Wapaka, contact Josh at 715-258-4405 or email jwerner at cityofwapaka.org. Full details at wintvwapaka.com. Our next guest today is Kathy Kaza, who is the City of Wapaka's new Finance Director. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you, Joni. And welcome to Wapaka. Now, we were talking a little bit before this. You actually already owned a home in Wapaka, so you are very familiar with this right. area. We had purchased our home about 10 years ago in Wapaka, and we're using it on the weekends to come uh, up here and visit. So now you're going to do the opposite, because you're from the Milwaukee area? Correct. Um, so now you're going to do the opposite, and you're going to vacation in Milwaukee. I'm going to be a weekend resident in, in Milwaukee it's instead it, of Wapaka. There yes. you go, and you're going to stay down there. So where do you come from, and what's your background as far as being a finance director? Uh, I have almost 30 years in municipal finance. Uh, I started in the city of Greenfield, which is a southwest suburb of Milwaukee. And um, after 15 years, I um, took a, the job for the treasurer controller for the village of Brown Deer, which is on the north side of Milwaukee. And um, during my tenure there, I put up with four years of the Marquette Interchange uh, construction and uh, then uh, the job at the village of Greendale for the clerk treasurer opened up, which is right next to Greenfields where I live. So I um, went, was there for seven years and had been looking since uh, we bought the house up here for a position up here, so. So you wanted to move up to the Wapaka area? Correct. Well, that's kind of neat. It's a nice city. Yes. It's up here. Nice and small, moves slower than Milwaukee. So tell me what a finance director does. Well, the finance director is the person who does the um, financial statements, uh, the, how would you say, the books for the city to make sure that it's in good financial condition, uh, make sure that uh, we're depositing the money on time, uh, accounting for it in the correct accounts, uh, providing the council and the departments with financial advice as to when to go borrow, when to uh, look at what will impact their tax rate. So it's, uh, it's more of an advisory position, uh, whereas, but in Wapaka, I also do a lot of other things where, uh, because our department isn't as big as the Milwaukee department that I was right. in. And this position was created so when um, Jean, the treasurer, retired, they actually created this position and expanded the duties here to include some other things. Correct. So 
it, it was a bookkeeper's type position with the, when Jean was there, and it's now expanded to take advantage of the skills that I'm bringing to the table. Sure. So how are you settling into the position? It's um, been one of those learning, uh, just like any other new position, where you you have um, to learn where the, what where the things are in the in the in the books in the departments, uh, how each of the departments operate, how the city operates, how the citizens um, react or counter. Well, it's new people and new ways of doing things. And you always go into something with, you know, this is the way things have always been. So the new kid on the block is titillating. I mean, it's fun and exciting and it's frustrating and it's all of those things. So yes, it is. Welcome to the city of Wapaka. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll see you again. Yes. All right. Next up on the show, we are going to learn about Crime Stoppers. The Wapaka Recreation Center. Featuring programming for all ages. Home of the Wapaka Senior Center and youth programming Friday and Saturday nights, featuring two full gyms and space for various sports and activities. Visit the dance exercise studio for a variety of classes. The rec center is a safe place to hang out. Also featuring a computer lab and classes, and a meeting room and other facilities available for rent. The rec center features different programming and meetings and is the home of the Parks and Recreation Office. The Wapaka Recreation Center, a great place for all ages and activities. 407 School Street, downtown Wapaka. Our next guest on today's show is Brian Hosell, who is a detective with the Wapaka Police Department. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you. It's good to have you on. Now, you are here today to talk about Crime Stoppers and how we can help the police solve crimes or stop them when they're in the middle of them. Now, Crime Stoppers has been around for a long time. We all remember hearing about it forever and ever. Um, so how do I, how does it work in the city of Wapaka? Well, um, Crime Stoppers, it's, it's a nonprofit organization. And on a monthly basis, there's a group of law enforcement and a group of citizens from Wapaka County that get together. And we meet on a monthly basis and talk about different um, crimes that have happened in the community. And one of the things that we came up with over the last few years was a program that was called TIPSOF. Because years ago, all that there was was just a phone number when somebody saw something that was going on for them to call in. With the new technology and everything with the smartphones and everything else, we decided to go out and get this TIPSOF program because we were only getting 12 tips a year. So people can, with tips off, they can text? They can actually text a tip in as it's going on. And what happens is, as soon as that text is sent, it actually pops up in the software and it sends an alert as an email to um, the officers, the administrators that have that. So it actually goes actually into the dispatch center when that tip comes in. And we can open that up and we can actually see something that's going on. So you can respond, say I'm on the street and I see someone um, that is breaking into a house. I mean, you can respond literally within a few minutes with the tip soft, yes, correct? If, yes, if I'm working, I can actually go onto my computer I'll see that that comes in and I can, can actually communicate back and forth with you by typing into it. And what's really neat about it is you are truly anonymous. How can I be anonymous if you are talking back and forth with me? Because we're communicating back and forth through the computer. Right. And your name does not pop up. Only a number actually pops up with some letters. That's how you are identified. Oh, so once I've sent you a text, then it, it, 
does not keep track of my phone number or my name or anything. Nope, everything. It just assigns me a random name. A random num number. Random with, number. With letters. Well, that's kind of nice because sometimes we're scared of the repercussions. If somebody finds out that it was me that, that called the police and gave a tip or texted, then, I mean, that can stop us because we don't necessarily want to get ourselves into trouble. And I think that's what the biggest fear was when people are afraid to call in on a phone line, somebody's going to recognize somebody's voice. Sure. But when we enacted this about two and a half years ago, um, we went from getting approximately 12 tips a year. Um, over the last few years, we've gotten in between 60 and 70 tips. And they've really helped us in solving crimes because the people are out in the community, there really are eyes and ears as to what's going on. We don't always get to actually see when the crime is actually happening, mm -hmm. but other people see things that are strange and are not sure. But mm -hmm. you know, if they can go ahead and text or they can actually go on uh, Crime Stoppers website and they can actually submit a tip through Tipsoft there and we get that. Or we could call the Wolpaca Police or, Department and get the information from there right, as well. Correct. Right, correct. Good. So, um, yeah, it's real easy. We have brochures that are at all the local law enforcement agencies and it's just as easy as typing in the, the number when you, instead of a phone number, you type in 274637, and then you begin your text out as WAPACA, and you type your information that's in there, and as soon as you hit send, it comes to us right away. Sounds good. For those of us that text. Correct. I don't <laughs> actually text, but for those who do, that's a great thing. So thank you, Brian, for being on the show today. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate things like Crime Stoppers as well. All right, thank you for having us. You bet. Next, we have the pet of the month, and it is a cutie. WenTVWapaka.com, your official online home of WenTV. Let us know about your upcoming community events to promote on WenTV. No cable? Watch WenTV's live stream. All local programming is available on demand on our website. Watch your favorite Win TV show on your schedule. And view our program schedule to find out when your favorite shows are on. More than just cable, WinTVWapaka.com. We have Monica Gardner back again. It's so good to see you. This month, for Pet of the Month, you have... A little tiny guy. It's a girl. It's a girl. <laughs> Her name is Velma, and she's only about eight weeks old. And she's a chihuahua. I think so, yeah. Or a chihuahua mix. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> she's cute. Yeah. She is just a deep, dark brown mm -hmm. and very friendly. Mm -hmm. You can tell she's just a puppy because she's yeah. after my fingertips. She likes lots of attention. She's going to be a very spoiled little girl, I think. Yeah. So at eight weeks old, is she ready for adoption yet or not, not quite? quite. Um, she has an appointment with the vet, I think, on um, February 17th. So by the time this airs, I'm hoping that she'll be spayed and with her brothers and sisters, all of them will be ready to go. Wonderful. She is adorable. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we want to keep in mind is that puppies are some, something that is sought after very much. Yes. So if you want a puppy, you need to get your application in, get approved, mm -hmm. so that you can choose one of these little ones when they're ready to go. Right. She's, she's a little crier. She doesn't know what's <laughs> going on. She's adorable. I love the huge ears that are going on. OK, so how do I find your place? OK, well, everybody kind of knows where Fleet Farm is, and everybody kind of knows where the airport is. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the frontage road that goes in the front of the airport, we're like the back road that goes behind the airport. It's called Commercial Drive. Uh -huh. So if I, if, I if I turn opposite from going toward Fleet Farm, mm -hmm. then I come to a T. And to get to you, I take a left. Right. To get to the airport, Correct. I take a right. Correct. So, and quickly, just what are your hours? Oh boy. <laughs> it's, I mean, you're open Monday, you're Monday, closed on Tuesday. Monday and Thursday, we're open 12 till 3. We're closed on Tuesday. On Wednesday and Friday, we're open 2 till 7. 
Saturday 12 till 5, Sunday 11 till 1, and you can find all that on our website if you go to wapakiumaine.org. Yep. yep. So you can just drop in. You can fill out an application. You can take a look around mm -hmm. if you want. And that, and I know that the hours are on the door as well. So if you miss them, you can come back. Right. And if you don't so. feel like running over, just go to the website because you can do the application. You can look at all the dogs and cats. Everything is on the website. And it's a new website. So check it out. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. We'll see you in three weeks. Yep. All right. Thank you for joining us for what's happening at Wapaka. It's hard to believe spring is almost here. Our next episode features some great spring topics. See you again with a new episode starting the week of March 15th.